OK, um, to the audience, hopefully you can hear me now. For, for some bizarre reason, there was uh, no audio coming through on your side, although I was um, somewhat blissfully unaware. Um, <laughs> Uh, I will do a summary version of my of my presentation. The purpose being to introduce to you the majors applied maths, astrophysics, maths and physics. Um, my background is predominantly in physics, and so there's a slight bias in this presentation at, towards that. Um, very quickly, physics, um, most of you will recognize as being one half of the discipline uh, physical science done at school. At university, physical science is broken up into its two parts physics and chemistry and and actually very few learners or very few students at UCT end up co-majoring in both physics and in, in chemistry. Uh, but that's not a problem for first year. One of my jobs as a student advisor is to advise students on a load on a curriculum that keeps as many options open as, as possible for later years. And certainly physics and chemistry together in first year is quite common, but usually students will drop one of those two in their second year. Physics, you guys know, is the um, discipline that deals with matter and energy and the interactions between them. And uh, what physics is particularly, and physicists are particularly good at, is asking fundamental questions of the world around them and explaining the behavior of the world around using fundamental equations, writing down um, the, 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 the behavior of nature in maths. What about astrophysics? Well, astrophysics uses the ideas of uh, physics and applies those, those physics principles and ideas to the astronomical objects around. And, and in particular, uh, what astrophysicists tend to do is to study the light that is emitted from um, far off places. And when I talk of light here, I'm not talking just of visible light. I'm talking about the full electromagnetic spectrum. So here's a, I think, a, a, a quite pretty slide that shows not just the visible part of the spectrum here in the middle, but all of the parts of the spectrum to lower energies, infrared, microwave, radio, and on the high energy side, ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma ray. And Bottom of the slide, what I have here is the same object, the M51 Whirlpool Galaxy, but observed in the visible in the center. And then as I go to the right, first of all, this here is the ultraviolet image that we would get and the X-ray image on the far right. And you can look at the left as well. So the point is astrophysicists collect light, electromagnetic radiation from far away places, and from that are able to infer stuff. Um, now, how can they do that? Well, they can infer stuff because of quantum mechanics, which is one of the very important fundamental building blocks of physics. And uh, quantum mechanics, is, as it's shown here, non-relativistic quantum mechanics, this beautiful partial differential equation is the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. And you'll see it, um, well, you see students in second and third year physics, but a consequence of this equation is that every element, everything on the periodic table, has a very unique color fingerprint. So it's a, a, a very particular set of um, colors that it can emit. And so by observing far away objects, astronomers are able to do a match uh, with the known color fingerprints and infer what it is that this distant object is made from. There's more to that though. Um, of course, um, light, well, maybe not of course, light is an electromagnetic wave and electromagnetism is governed by the laws of electromagnetism, Maxwell's equations, in fact. And here shown in four lines are all of the principles of electromagnetism in maths terms. So these four lines correspond to four, the four Maxwell equations that UCT physics students will see in their second and third year. Um, in first year, we will also um, introduce students to Maxwell or Maxwell's equations, but not written in this compact form here. So really the point is here not to teach you about Maxwell's equations, but to whet your appetite to hopefully get you excited about of um, learning about this in, in, in the years to come. Um, wonderfully beautiful set of equations from which all of electromagnetism follows, why rainbows are the way they are, um, why magnetic fields around bar magnets look the way that they do. Something else you can tell from looking at, at the light from far away objects is you can infer the temperature of those objects. And, and in this case, it's 
statistical mechanics and thermodynamics that is important that, that provides the theoretical input. So my purpose of the slides here was to show that astro, uh, astrophysicists can do what they can do because of fundamental physics behind the scenes and the two play very, very nicely together. At UCT, there are a lot of different um, research interests in the physics department. There is um, high energy particle physics, where we have experimentalists and theorists very interested in um, the experiments taking place at the Large Hadron Collider. So here's a picture um, from the Large Hadron Collider, an actual photograph. Here, top left, is a um, is is a simulation of of the particle production in 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 such a a collision. So that's high energy particle physics. There's also a lot of effort that goes into nuclear physics. Um, here, uh, um, middle on the right, is a picture from um, Itemba Labs, a uh, nuclear um, facility just outside Somerset West. And UCT has the distinction of being the coldest place in Africa because another of our very active um, research groups is in nanophysics, in uh, solid state um, nanoscale physics. and Here's Professor Blumenthal. He has um, at his disposal a dilution fridge that is able to cool things to less than eight millikelvin. Less than eight millikelvin. Remember, absolute zero. Zero Kelvin is the coldest you can get. You can't get. You can't go negative on the Kelvin scale. What about astrophysics? Well, lots of different um, research interests in the astrophysics department at UCT, um, looking at the full spectrum electromagnetic spectrum, but in terms of the equipment that they use, a lot of the astronomers at, at UCT Physics are geared towards looking at Meerkat and the square kilometer array, um, both um, using those instruments to, to observe, but also to analyze the data afterwards, and also the telescopes at the um, South African Astronomical Observatory, such as SALT, um, outside, just outside Sutherland. So that's astrophysics um, and physics. I'll just mention that together with physics and astro, there are a number of other subjects that one can pair up with them uh, to form a, a, a really um, quite interesting and varied degree. So there's an example. Here are some examples of co-majors with physics. Here are some co-majors with astro. Um, in principle, though, anything is possible as long as there isn't a timetable clash. What about maths? Well, um, mathematics is um, by definition the, the, the study um, of patterns and using the, the study of the patterns and, and, and looking at these patterns and using these patterns to formulate conjectures, uh, in other words, to make hypotheses, if you will, and then to test those conjectures through mathematical proof. Uh, many uh, different branches of pure mathematics, um, four of them given at the top, uh, number theory, algebra, geometry, and analysis. A lot of first year um, mathematics at UCT goes into the study of differential and integral calculus. But as one gets beyond first year, the topics become more and more abstract. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, in second and third year mathematics and beyond, they're abstract in the sense, these topics, that no specific application is in mind when studying them. For example, when doing uh, the module on real analysis, there is no concern about what use this could be in the real world. Now, please don't, don't misinterpret me there as saying that pure mathematics is not useful to the real world. world. It most certainly is. But the point is, pure mathematics does not primarily concern itself with the application. It concerns itself just with the formulation and development of the pure mass theory. And then it's left to the applied mathematicians, the physicists, the uh, engineers to actually apply that pure mathematics. Applied mathematics then is, um, well, mathematics as the name suggests, with an application specifically in mind. Now, the thing that I want to stress here is that Applied maths is not AP maths. So those learners who are doing AP maths at school um, and are enjoying it does not necessarily mean that you will be drawn to applied mathematics. And certainly if you're not doing an AP maths at school, then that doesn't, um, doesn't well, then there's absolutely no reason why you, you, you couldn't be drawn to and be very, very good at applied mathematics, right? So applied maths at UCT is not AP maths. Applied maths, uh, throughout the world is is 
applied to uh, maths applied to various disciplines, but at UCT the applied maths is particularly physics-y. That's not really a word, but I, I'll make it up, right? So at UCT most of the applied maths applications are in the field of physics, and so at least in my mind it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be doing applied mathematics at UCT unless you're also doing a healthy amount of physics as well. Um, in first year, the applied maths that is, is introduced is, is what's called modeling and applied computing. Modeling is, is taking a system and trying to write uh, or try and develop a mathematical model, mathematical um, system really for explaining how it behaves. Um, but also first year applied maths also contains a dynamics element, which is really Newton's laws. And so there you can see straight away just how key um, to, to um, applied maths at UCT that physics is. In senior years, lots of different topics that are, that are taught. I'm not going to go through these in great detail, but just point out that if your interests are cosmology, the, um, the, you know, you're thinking of, um, for instance, Professor Hawking um, and all of those popular science books about general relativity and, and warping of space and time, etc. Well, then you would get your dose of that at UCT by taking applied mathematics, right? Applied mathematicians at UCT um, or the applied maths department includes a, um, a rather large group of cosmologists of um, Professor Hawking type researchers. Popular co-majors with maths and applied maths, uh, there we have them again, not an exhaustive list, but that's those are the most common things that can go with maths and applied maths. Um, one of the most common questions that I get asked is about careers and what is it that people uh, who graduate in physics, astro, maths and applied maths end up doing. Um, a lot become research scientists, but the earlier one leaves the field of, of study in this discipline, the less likely you are to be using the actual content that you studied in your day to day job, right? So if one um, does a BSc three years in maths, applied maths, physics, astro, something like that, then one is certainly, uh, the graduate is most certainly very marketable, but it's unlikely that a, a graduate after three years is going to be using the physics, maths, applied maths and astro content that they learned directly in their job. Instead, what would happen is those graduates would be using the softer skills, the uh, problem solving skills, the ability to, to program a computer, um, the numeracy skills, the scientific communication skills. Obviously, the longer you study, um, in this discipline, the more likely you are to be able to find a job where you're actually using the content in a day to day basis. Um, but the reality is that you're not really a physicist or an astronomer or mathematician or applied mathematician unless you have a PhD in that in that discipline or at the very least a master's. Right. Um, what should you be doing right now if this is uh, uh, something that interests you, this particular cluster of majors? Well, the most important advice that I would have um, for you is to make sure that you work incredibly hard um, at your mathematics at school and or well, your physical science as well, um, but particularly the mathematics. Uh, I'm sure that um, your teachers have told you repeatedly at school just how important maths is in, in um, physics and chemistry, but you don't fully appreciate just how important it is until you actually get to university and you see just how mathsy physics um, and, um, and astrophysics in particular becomes. And your enjoyment in this cluster of majors will be largely determined by your ability or your proficiency and your confidence in mathematics. So that was um, a somewhat abbreviated form, um, given the technical difficulties at the start of the presentation that I'd wanted to give. Um, I hope that there will be um, a number of you guys, I'm speaking now to the grade 12 learners, um, that we see next year at UCT in 2023. Um, and those who are somewhat younger, um, I hope to see you in um, how many years after that that you require to get to NSC, um, get through NSC grade 12. Um, certainly UCT is a wonderful place. UCT science is a wonderful place to be studying 
um, pretty much any of, well, all of the majors in science are wonderful choices, but I certainly, as a, as a physicist in my cluster, hope to see lots and lots of you majoring in my cluster. So what I'm going to do, since we, um, we, we, um, we started late and I haven't had a chance to have a look at the Q&A, um, is I'm going to, the producers of the session will, will, will stop it from being live now, but I will go and check the Q&A and I will respond to questions in the Q&A. Um, but I believe that um, you then need to remain online in order to be able to access those answers. But I will field those questions now. Um, but I would imagine that the producer will now stop the live feed of the event. Um, and you may well now want to find your way to one of the other presentations. So thank you very much.